Hi, this is Sean with Clue Control, and I'm going to walk you through building an RFID puzzle using an Arduino and connecting it to Clue Control. It's a pretty easy project, but there are a couple things you're going to need to know before you get started. You're going to need to know how to solder a piece onto a circuit board, which also means you need a soldering iron and some solder. You're going to need to know how to program an Arduino. I'm going to give you the source code, but you have to know how to load it onto the Arduino. You're going to have to know how to wire up a couple LEDs, and also enough about TCPIP to determine an IP address and to know what a MAC address is. Overall, it's pretty easy, and as long as you can get a handle on these couple things, it shouldn't be a problem. Let's take a look at the things you'll need to buy to get started. These are all the parts you'll need to put it together. I'll have links to each one of these in the posting with the video to make it easier. Start with the RFID kit over on the left. It comes with all the pieces that you see grouped right here. And we're going to talk more in detail about that one. The next thing, of course, you need an Arduino. I use one from Elegoo. I find them to be a good cost and pretty reliable. You're also going to need an Ethernet shield to go with that Arduino. Pretty easy. And you need a power supply here. And then optionally, you can use this box. You can see it comes with knockouts for the Ethernet and for the power supply and the programming cord. Let's take a look at the RFID kit in a little bit more detail. This is my Bebon Cool RFID kit right here. Notice these holes. This is where you have to connect these headers, and this is where the soldering is going to take place. You have a straight header like this, and then you also have a curved one. It's really up to you which one you use. It just depends how you're going to mount the wires. The header plugs right in here, just like this, or you can do the straight one again. The pins line up with the holes. You can put it on the back, too. It really doesn't matter electrically. Whichever one works out best for what you're trying to do. Then we've got the RFID card. It's about the size of a credit card. Maybe a little bit thicker, you can see, but it's about a credit card size. And then the RFID key fob, which I think this is about the size of a quarter, the circle in the middle here. All that together makes up the kit. And uh, I'm going to show you a board that I already soldered here so that you can see. You've got to solder this header into place. It's not just sitting in there. It's a tight fit, but you've got to solder it. See the little solders on there. So make sure you do that with your board, and you should be good to go. Everybody likes to know how much these things cost, so we'll put the prices up here for you. These are all on Amazon, and the links are going to be where the video is posted. So the RFID kit is $7, and then your Arduino, the Elegoo that I got, is about 10 bucks. And so is the Ethernet shield. That's another 10 You need the power, so that's $8. And if you want to, you can get the box also. And the box is another $11. So the total cost is about 50 bucks, and that'll get you going. Next, we'll look at the source code. It's installed with Clue Control in the same directory. Program files, Clue Control, Arduino sketches here, RFID. You can see right where that one is. The only file you really have to worry about, you can skip these and just go right to RFID to ANO. That'll be your source code. Just double click on that to open your editor. And you can see the source code comes up. We've done our best to document and add lots of comments and description in here. There's only a couple parts you really have to pay any attention to, though. The first one is right here where we show you the pins that have to be wired up for the RFID. And also, the RFID pins share some of the Ethernet shield pins, and you can't change them around. But if you want to, and you know what you're doing, of course, you can change some of these values. This part's just the comment section to describe them. Right here is where you'd actually change them if you wanted to change some of the pin assignments. And if you're not sure about that, then just leave it like it is and it'll work just fine. The next part that you're going to want to look at is the user settings. And these are specific settings that you really should take a look at and adjust so the system operates just the way that you want to. The first one is the Clue Control coil number. This is the number that Clue Control is going to expect to receive from this particular device. You can only use any number once in your whole system, so keep that in mind. You might want to make a spreadsheet that lists the different coil numbers that you use for your different puzzles. The next thing you can choose is if you want to know when the card leaves the field, then you can leave this defined. If you don't really care when that happens, you just want to know if the card comes into the field, then you can just comment this out and that'll be fine. And then also, if you want to boost the range of the receiver just a tiny bit, leave this uncommented, and that's really the best thing to do. Even with this range boost, the range is just under an inch. It's a very short range reader, the particular one that I've got. The next thing is common anode. This just has to do with how you're wiring your LEDs. Just read the comment up above. If sending a high turns your LED off, then you want to leave common anode defined. If turn, sending a high turns your light on, 
then leave this commented out like I have it here. That's how I wired mine in the demo that I'm going to show you in just a minute. The last thing is all of our TCP IP settings. You need to have a unique MAC address for each device in your network. So you can change one character in here and that's good enough. Again, you might want to keep track of that, make a spreadsheet to list them all out. Each device needs its own IP address. You set that right here. Most likely you'll just change this last octet here, this last set of digits. The gateway and subnet probably will stay the same for you. And then you need to enter the Clue Control's IP address. This will be the IP address of the computer running Clue Control. If you're using two different network cards, make sure you put in the correct one. And Clue Control will show you the IP address that it thinks it's using. So make sure you enter that in here. Once you've got that all set, you're really ready to go. You don't have to do anything else with the rest of the code. Of course, it's open source, so you're welcome to read over it and change it to suit your needs. But it does work right out of the box. We're trying to give you as much value as we can here. Here's the board I built to show you how it works. You can see I used the wire headers just to connect the wires from here over to the headers on the Arduino. You might want to do something more permanent for your actual game. And I used this breadboard to do the LEDs and just plugged the wires into the headers again. So you can see this is our test system for today. With our board built, let's go ahead and compile and we will upload this to the Arduino. You can see it uploads fine. And there we go. All right, now let's take a look at how this thing works. All right, I've got it so you can see the actual board over on the left and you can see the serial monitor over on the right. So we can keep an eye on both. Now the way this code works, there's one device that's called the master device. This master puts the unit into a programming mode. If it sees a device that it already knows, it will remove it from its database. If it sees a device it doesn't know, it will add it to its database. So very simple operation. When we first power it up after having programmed it, it has no master device, so it'll sit with just the green light flashing waiting for the master to show up. We're going to use the key fob as our master, so we'll take the key fob and put it near it. And you can see that it recognized the master and it says it's now in programming mode. We can tell by the lights too. If we bring the card near it now, you can see that it adds the card, and there we go. Now we'll bring the master back over and that'll take it out of programming mode, and the lights will stop cycling. Uh, I held it there too long. I, let me do it again and just keep it there for just a second. There we go. Now it's out of programming mode and we're ready to run. All right, in Clue Control, what we have to do is just add the trigger to the database. So we're in the Modbus trigger setup screen. We're going to enter our trigger and call it RFID trigger one. And if you remember in the source code, we had a value of five for the CC coil number. So that goes here. And this is a toggle type, meaning it can turn back on, basically. If you don't check this box, then Clue Control doesn't expect it to turn back on. And because it's already functional, if I bring the card near it, you can see the test box already lights up, so we're already connected. But the next thing we want to do is add it to a puzzle. So let's go into the puzzle screen. And in the puzzle screen, we'll add a new puzzle, and we'll call it RFID Puzzle. And it doesn't solve the game. We don't need reset instructions. Uh, just for completeness, we'll give it a clue and we'll tell them to find the access card in case they don't know that already. And we will give them a reward when they solve the puzzle that says access granted. Now the thing you got to do is down here in the trigger box, choose the RFID trigger. And now you've tied that trigger to this puzzle and we're ready to go. So let's go see how this works. All right, so we're going to open the Let's Escape window and we're going to see all this work pay off. You can see we've got this serial monitor over on the right, which that's just for demonstration. That really wouldn't be there. And you don't have to have anything hooked up to the Arduino other than power and the RFID reader and the Ethernet connection. On the left, you can see we've got the video of the actual card, and we're going to watch it all work at once. So I'm going to bring the card close to the reader, and right away you can see the communication in the comm window and clue control mark the puzzle as solved. And that's all there is to it. If you want any more details about this, check out our website at cluecontrol.com and sign up for your free trial today. And feel free to drop us an email or ping us on Facebook. We're always here to help.